Here I'm going to teach you how to name alkanes. Let's start by revising. What is the chemical formula for this structure? Quick. C8H18. I hope all of you got it right. Now, to name an alkane, we always look out for the longest chain of carbons. What do I mean? So you have to start with the skeleton structure, and then you see, okay, if I begin from here, one, two, three, four. That's the longest I can go without branching, four. Can I try another way that's longer than four? So I start one, two, three, four, five. Hey, isn't this better than just now? But is it the best? What if we start from here? I get one, two, three, four, five, six. Six is even longer than our previous record, which is five. So, do we take it this way? Could we have another one that's longer than six? You try it, impossible. But wait, can't we start from the other side? We label one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, you can do that. So, the longest chain is still six no matter what, which means our core name for this molecule it's a 6-carbon alkane, and we call it hexane, right? Running here. Now, whichever my finger didn't cover would be what we call our substituent. Branched. So if you notice, when I run this longest chain, we did not catch these two parts. And each of these part has the same CH3 that we did not cover. And we call CH3, these substituents are called methyl groups. Why are CH3 called methyl? Because they came from methane. In fact, methane, CH4, but when you cut off this part, so there's one loose bond here that could be joined to any part of another fragment freely. So we change the word from methane, drop the ain, and add the io. So that's a methyl group with one loose bond. So we attach this methyl group to this carbon and that carbon respectively. No. So here we have two methyl groups. That means we have dimethyl in the name two methyl groups, but you have to tell me where the location of these methyl groups are. So we have to decide, do we start naming, counting from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, or the other side, okay? We have to contest. If you look at this green marking, okay? Only when I reach number three and then four, we have our substituents. So three and four, we have substituents, and if you go with the pink marking from the top, we also have 3 and 4. So that means it doesn't matter in this case which one we start off with. It will be the same. In fact, you can see a symmetry line here. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, it's very symmetrical. So for the name for that molecule, it would be called 3, 4, di, mi, tau, hexane. Reinsert it before the parent name, the substituents, including the location. We have to put down the numbers 3, 4 because this is indicative of the respective locations of these two methyl groups. And we separate the numbers using comma and we separate numbers from letters using a hyphen. Let's look at another example. This example, first things first, let's try to get the chemical formula. Got it? C11 
age 24. Now, where is the longest chain? Most people will think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's it. Remember, to name a molecule properly, you have to try out and exhaust all the different ways to find the longest chain. If not, you might make a mistake. That's not very desirable. So if I start from here, and I end there, I have six. Six in one row. Can I beat that? So if I start from here, one, two, three, four. Nah, no good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, now I have a new king. Seven, better right. Can we be better than seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Look at that, eight. Eight is larger than seven. Seven got dethroned again. It's eight. Can we beat eight? One, two, three, four, five, six. No good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It is the same path as where we come from just now for eight. So eight must be our parent name. Eight, carbon alkane, octane. And as you see, as you run my fingers here, what was not covered? This portion, which is the methyl group, and that portion, which is a ethyl group. Ethyl. CH3, CH2. Right here, not covered. So we write down, we have an ethyl group. We also have a methyl group. And at which position they are. So we have to ask ourselves, do we come from this side or the other side? Suppose we label from here. Let's use the green marker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At the third and the fifth carbon, we see substituents. So for the green marker, it's three, comma, five. If I run it from the opposite side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The first substituent appears at the fourth carbon, and the second one appears at the sixth carbon. We do not add up this number. We will arrange them from the smallest to the largest, and then we go one by one. Now, the lowest number here is three, the other side is four. Which is lower? Three is lower. So the whole set will win. That means we will take this arrangement of numbers. Which means we will start to count from here using the green marker. So according to this, the first substituent is at the third carbon and that's the methyl group. So in front of the methyl group, we add three. Fifth carbon has an ethyl group. So it's a five hyphen ethyl. Now, how do we put this back in front of the parent chain? We accord it to alphabetical order. So we look at this first. M against E. Who goes first? When you're in your nursery, your teacher will have taught you the song. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right? So you should know that E comes before M, and hence we write I rewrite this, eh? 5 ethyl, 3 methyl, octane. Oops, can't see it. <laughs> okay, we write again, more space. 5 ethyl, 3 methyl, octane. Just one word. And you see here, we separate numbers from letters using hyphen. Okay, so we always look at the alphabetical order for the substituents.